My name is Claire, and I married Jason last summer after dating for four years. Our love story began in a quaint bookstore downtown, where we both reached for the same book at the same time. It was one of those meet-cute moments that felt straight out of a romantic movie. Jason, a year older than me, works as a financial analyst, a profession that suits his methodical and detail-oriented nature. Despite his profession, Jason has always been the type to embrace spontaneity, which is what made our relationship so special. On our third anniversary, Jason planned a surprise weekend getaway to a cozy cabin in the mountains. The proposal was simple, yet heartfelt. After a day of hiking, we returned to the cabin where Jason had prepared a romantic dinner. As the sun set behind the mountains, he knelt down and asked me to marry him, presenting a delicate ring that perfectly captured my style. Overwhelmed with joy, I immediately said yes. The simplicity of the moment, surrounded by nature, made it even more meaningful. After our engagement, we hosted a small celebration with our closest friends and family. It was during this party that I first met Jason's extended family. Jason has two siblings, an older brother named Mark, who is five years his senior, and a younger sister, Emily, who is three years younger. Mark, a successful entrepreneur, was in the midst of planning his own wedding while Emily was still finishing college. Although the atmosphere was festive, I couldn't help but notice the subtle tension in the air when I was introduced to Jason's mother, Linda, and his sister, Emily. They seemed pleasant enough on the surface, but I could sense that there was something unspoken beneath their polite smiles. Linda, standing at just five feet two inches, was a petite woman with a commanding presence. She had been the matriarch of the family ever since Jason's father passed away several years ago. Emily, on the other hand, was tall and slender like Jason, but there was a certain air of superiority about her. I was aware that being welcomed into a close-knit family could be challenging, but I didn't anticipate how difficult it would actually be. After our engagement party, Jason and I began planning our wedding. We both agreed that we wanted something simple and intimate, avoiding the stress and extravagance of a large ceremony. Instead of a traditional wedding, we decided to hold a small wedding announcement gathering at our favorite park. This, however, did not sit well with Linda and Emily, who had envisioned a grand event for Jason, the baby of the family. They voiced their displeasure during a visit to Jason's childhood home, where I felt their criticism acutely. It was a warm spring day, and I wore a light blue sundress with a pair of flats. As soon as we arrived, I could feel the tension. Linda and Emily were dressed more formally, and I immediately felt underdressed. Linda's eyes scanned me from head to toe before she remarked, couldn't you have dressed more appropriately for a family visit? Embarrassed, I apologized and offered to change, but Jason quickly intervened, trying to ease the situation. However, the rest of the visit was marked by passive-aggressive comments about my appearance, my background, and even my family's modest lifestyle. The final straw came when Emily began to scrutinize the dessert I had brought for the visit, a homemade lemon tart that Jason and I both loved. Lemon tart? In this weather? You should have brought something more suitable like a fruit salad or a sorbet, she said, her tone dripping with condescension. I felt a lump form in my throat as I tried to keep my composure. It was clear that nothing I did would ever be good enough for them. After we left, Jason apologized profusely. I never expected them to be so harsh, he said, his brow furrowed in concern. I thought they'd warm up to you over time, but I guess I was wrong. It's okay, I replied, though it wasn't. I was determined to win them over, but I also knew that building trust with them would take time. I just hoped that Jason's love and support would be enough to carry us through the rough patches. A few weeks later, Emily and her fiancé, Robert, invited themselves over to our apartment for an impromptu visit. Jason was swamped with work and couldn't be there, so I had to host them alone. I tidied up the apartment and prepared some snacks, trying to make the best of the situation. When they arrived, Emily barely acknowledged my efforts, immediately launching into a critique of our home. We're here to see if you're living up to the family's standards, she announced, brushing past me and heading straight for our bedroom. I was stunned as Emily began opening closets and drawers without asking for permission. What are you doing? I asked, my voice trembling with disbelief. Just making sure you're keeping things tidy, 
she replied nonchalantly. И зрение как будто рыскать в чужих вещах было самой естественной вещью в мире. She even took pictures of the contents of my closet, our bathroom, and the kitchen cabinets. My mom wanted to see how you're living, she explained when I asked her to stop. I was livid, but I tried to stay calm. This is incredibly invasive, I said, trying to maintain my composure. Please stop taking pictures. Emily ignored my request and continued her inspection. When she saw our new TV, a gift from my parents, she smirked. Nice TV, she commented before snapping another picture. Looks like you're living quite comfortably. That evening, when Jason returned home, I told him everything that had happened. I couldn't hold back my tears any longer. This isn't fair, I sobbed. Why are they treating me like this? Jason hugged me tightly, his face full of concern. I'm so sorry, Claire. We need to set some boundaries with them. This has gone too far. As time passed, my relationship with Linda and Emily continued to deteriorate. The tension between us was palpable, and it seemed that no matter what I did, I couldn't gain their approval. Jason did his best to support me, but I knew he was struggling to balance his loyalty to his family with his love for me. One day, Linda suggested a family trip to San Francisco, a city she had always wanted to visit. It would be a long weekend, and the plan was for Jason, his mother, his sister, and I to go. Mark and Robert couldn't join due to work commitments. I was excited about the trip, despite my misgivings about spending so much time with Linda and Emily. I hoped that this could be an opportunity for us to bond. The day before we were set to leave, Jason received an unexpected call from work that required him to stay behind. I'm really sorry, Claire, he said, his face filled with regret. I can't go on the trip. I tried to reschedule, but they won't budge. I was disappointed but determined to make the best of it. It's okay, Jason. I'll manage. Maybe this will be a chance for your mom and Emily to get to know me better. On the morning of the trip, we all met at the train station. As we were about to board, Linda suddenly exclaimed, Oh no, I think I left my scarf at the cafe upstairs. Claire, could you go get it for me? I hesitated, glancing at the clock. The train is leaving soon. Are you sure you'll make it back in time? Of course, Linda replied with a dismissive wave. Just hurry. Reluctantly, I ran upstairs to the cafe, only to find that there was no scarf left behind. Realizing it had been a setup, I rushed back down to the platform, but it was too late. The train had already departed. I stood there, feeling a mix of anger and humiliation. They had left me behind on purpose. As I processed what had happened, my phone buzzed. It was a text from Jason. Stay where you are. I'll be there soon. Fifteen minutes later, Jason arrived at the station, breathless but relieved to see me. I knew they were up to something, he said. My dad called me this morning and told me what was going on. We're not going to San Francisco. We're going somewhere else instead. It turned out that Jason's father, who had grown increasingly frustrated with Linda and Emily's behavior, had devised a plan with Jason to teach them a lesson. They had deliberately allowed Linda and Emily to leave me behind, knowing full well that Jason and I would reunite and go on a different trip without them. Our real destination was New Orleans, a city we had both wanted to visit for years. As we boarded a different train, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. For once, I wouldn't have to endure Linda and Emily's judgmental stares and cutting remarks. Meanwhile, Linda and Emily were on their way to San Francisco, completely unaware that Jason and I were no longer with them. They assumed Jason would catch up with them at the next stop, but as the hours passed and they received no word from him, they began to panic. By the time they arrived in San Francisco, they realized they had been abandoned. They tried calling and texting Jason and his father, but their messages went unanswered. Without much money and no hotel reservations, they were stranded in an unfamiliar city with no one to rely on. Jason and I, on the other hand, had a wonderful time in New Orleans. We explored the French Quarter, indulged in beignets at Café du Monde, and enjoyed the lively atmosphere of Bourbon Street. For the first time in months, I felt free from the oppressive scrutiny of Jason's family. After three days, we returned home, refreshed and ready to face whatever awaited us. 
Jason had warned me that there would likely be a confrontation with his mother and sister, but I felt stronger now, knowing that Jason was fully on my side. As expected, Linda and Emily were furious when they returned from their disastrous trip. They demanded an explanation from Jason and his father, accusing them of cruelty and abandonment. We did it because you tried to leave Claire behind, Jason said firmly. You both have been treating her terribly since the day we got engaged, and it needs to stop. Claire is my wife, and she deserves your respect. Linda and Emily were shocked into silence. They had never seen Jason so assertive before. Finally, Linda spoke, her voice trembling with emotion. We never meant to hurt her. We just... We wanted what was best for you. What's best for me is for you to accept Claire as part of this family, Jason replied. If you can't do that, then maybe we need to reconsider how much time we spend together. There was a long pause before Linda finally nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. You're right. We were wrong. We're sorry, Claire. Emily, though reluctant, also apologized. I'm sorry, too. I guess we were just... protective of Jason. But that doesn't excuse our behavior. I accepted their apologies, relieved that the conflict was finally out in the open. From that day forward, things slowly began to improve. Linda and Emily made a genuine effort to include me in family activities, and over time, we developed a mutual respect for each other. A year has passed since that fateful trip, and our relationship has continued to evolve. While Linda and Emily will never be my closest friends, we have found a way to coexist peacefully. We even managed to take a family trip to San Francisco this year, without any drama or tension. Looking back, I'm grateful for the challenges we faced. They made Jason and I stronger as a couple, and they taught me the importance of standing up for myself. Life isn't always easy, but with the right partner by your side, you can face anything together.